Hi guys, Cassidy LaCrome here and today I am going to teach you how to do my signature pin up roll. There's no heat, no teasing and it can be done in like five to ten minutes. my inverted faux bang pin up hair piece. As long as you have a little bit of hair in the front with length to it, we can make this style happen for you. Generally this signature pin up style will be done as what's called a faux bang. It's supposed to look like bangs, you know, a fringe in the front. There's so many really talented pin up girls in the world who do this hairstyle. They actually do it with their own hair. They do a lot of teasing, curling. It can be quite damaging to the hair. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. So I created a way to do it because I have really thin hair, especially at the front here. It's all snapped and damaged from years of styling. Good job, me. Now the way that I created this hairstyle is so there is no teasing, minimal hairspray, minimal damage to your hair, and you can do it whether you have short hair, long hair, bangs, no bangs. It doesn't matter. So basically I created this hairpiece hairstyle by accident for a photo shoot and I have sworn by it ever since. That photo shoot was in 2011 or 2012, we are 2019, seven to eight years. This one role has lasted me. This is my most requested video ever. So many people have been asking me to do this tutorial for years, um, but I was just so happy with this role, it's kind of done its run. As you can see in this video, it is super simple to make or send me an email um, and I can let you know the process of getting me to make one for you. This is my gift to you. I am sharing my biggest insider secret. Tag me in your photos. I want to see that, you know, sharing this has enriched your lives and allowed you to embrace pinup too. So don't forget, if you try this look, tag me, share it on Instagram. I'll share it in my story. I want to see. Now, if you like these glasses and you want to get your hands on a pair for yourself, I call them the bombshell glasses. Mm -hmm. Bombshell. And you can get them on my website in the merch section, www.cassidythecreme.com. We ship worldwide. For this tutorial, to make your own piece, you're going to need a small donut. This one's nice, good quality, which is gonna last you longer. Whereas this one, I haven't even cut it yet. And it's already peeling like an onion. So you really don't want this because I'll show you when I take this one off that that's what's happening. So it lessens the life of it. Um, so this, oh, we don't want. Um, see, this one has been cut, but there is a seam on it. So that's gonna make our lives a little bit easier. It's coming a bit undone here, but we can fix that in a minute. You will want a pair of scissors and you're just gonna cut through your donut to make it align like this. A word of warning, go for the thinnest donut you can find because it sounds like a good idea to have the thickest one possible. I tried making it with a big one, but the bigger the donut, the bigger the fringe. And um, once you wrap hair around it as well, it just gets thicker. So we start with this. And you're also going to want a strand of extensions. Um, I recommend human hair. Synthetic hair, you can't add heat to it. A bit shinier. If you can only get synthetic hair, you can do it. Add powder, mat it down, and it'll be fine, I'm sure. It just may not have as much longevity. Personally, with the human hair, it has lasted me so much longer, and when it's looking a bit shabby, I can add my straightener to it. And the best thing about if you use a human hair one, you can re-dye it. So say if you're blonde now and you go red, you can dye it red. If you make it synthetic, you're gonna have to make a new one every time. So just something to keep in mind. You can get hair wefts online really easy. These are from old extensions. So if you have an old pair of hair extensions lying around, just cut the clips off like I've done. You just want it to be thick enough that it's gonna cover your donut. You can test run it by holding it over your weft and wrapping it, just like roll it over and sort of see how the hair is sitting. So that's what it's gonna be. It's quite thick, not a lot of gaps, so it's quite desirable. It doesn't have to be that long either. 
just has to be able to wrap around it like one and a half times and not leave it at the back. You'll see, you'll see. And also make sure it's a good color match for your hair. I always keep my hair dyed to a 613 so I can use whatever hair pieces I want. The other thing you're going to need is, now you can choose if you are going to go with actual weave string that you can get. It's weave thread. It's very, very strong. I highly recommend it. You can get it online. These are used with one of these curved needles here. I've already seen we're using a round shape thing. It is easier. But if you can't get your hands on it, you want to keep on a lower budget, just get whatever color thread is the closest to the hair color that you're using. These little bits are driving me crazy already. I know what the outcome will be. I'm just going to take a second to sew these down. Just make sure that there's a thread going through it that's going to keep it all together and that way it's going to last you longer. So just loop it through. Why so serious? <laughs> Trying to focus! <laughs> Done. So now from side to side, in the center of our donut, it's all nice and put together. All right. If you get little bits like this, don't worry about it. I just cut them off. So now we want to sort of measure around the outside curve of the donut and cut, cut it through. Now see when you cut it apart, make sure you're getting all the excess hair. So that is our weft piece and it is cut to measure. And we're ready to go. So we're going to take our weave piece, place it right to the edge, through the center of our donut, up through the seam of the hair if you can. You want to go over the edge of the hair a couple of times here, just so it's secure on the edges here. You're not going to get that hair falling off. We want to go through the donut so that our thread is coming under the hair. Then we want to go up and over the edge of the hair, bring it back through here. Keeping a loop, drop the loop over your needle. Make sure you're not getting any hair caught in there. I know it's fidgety at the start, but once you get in a roll, pull it tight. So that way it's actually pulling the hair down to the hair piece. Keeping your hand wrapped around the hair is going to keep it more taut. So we're making the loops and pulling it through from the front, under the seam, make the loop, put your needle through and pull. And you're seriously just going to repeat that all the way along, about half a centimetre apart each time. Concentration face looks an awful lot like a resting bitch face, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm not that serious, I promise. Any hairs that annoy us too much like this, we can always cut off later. The goal is at the end for the hair to be falling nicely along. Hopefully in as straight of a line as possible. All right, so that's come along nicely. But I've got a little excess hair. Now, you might be tempted to just fold it into there, but that will create trouble when you style it later. So, you're better off to chop it off right at the edge. So then you just wanna do a couple of stitches going in around the edge of the weave. And then on the second one, I pull it through again, just to lock that edge down. All right, so there we have it got any hairs that are just like running wild, just pull them out. It's not coming out of your head, so we can afford to be a little bit rougher with it. Ha 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 ha. No. Okay, so now we're going to take off the old one and compare it with the new one. Okay, so there it off. Now you're going to see what it looks like every time I take this off pre-water. It's not sexy. So. I unroll it slowly, 
so that the hairs I've stuck down don't all just rip. It's gonna give you a nice uh, cowlick look. All right, so this is my seven-year-old hair piece. You can see here, it's all unraveling. Even the hair piece itself is coming up and I've been using bobby pins to keep it down because I was too lazy to fix it. But yeah, she, she's well and truly finished. Thank you, buddy. You did me well. So we got our new one and our old one. All right, so now you'll see why it's best to have a donut that's matched the color of your hair or as close as possible because when you roll it, if it parts a little, that's only a little bit of a difference. It doesn't matter as much and it's easier to hide. If I had black under there, you know, it's gonna be very obvious and get like red ones, brown ones, gray ones online. So hopefully that helps. A word of warning, the first time you try this, you're probably gonna be really frustrated, but then it becomes second nature. So make sure you pay attention to the little tips and tricks I'm gonna give you. That will be much easier. You will see what I mean now by no teasing whatsoever. The only thing you have to be careful of is when you're taking it out, not to rip all your hairs out here that were attached to the piece. Okay. Try and get it all as flat as over to the side. Make sure no hairs are like sticking up and over. Now see how when you roll it like this, it's a little frustrating because all the side ones come over. If you just tease here the tiniest bit, just a quick little push, along the hairline, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's just gonna help you with your rolling. Oh, sorry, my straps have popped out. Roll facing this way, center part. You can swap hands, whichever your dominant hand. Mine's the right hand is my dominant hand. So I hold it with my right hand, take the hair with my left hand, and you want the hair to be towards the center. This is always a bit of a challenge the first time you do it. So I see half roll, and nice and tight. Yes. So there you go, it's a full roll now. Okay, so see how it's basically taken shape on its own. I like to keep it in my left hand and make it into a donut shape. So all the hair is going into the center. Now, you want the flat part to lay on your head. I like to keep it curled in my non-dominant hand so my right hand can do the work with the pin. Put my eye out. So, flat part of the hair, on the head. Flap down. Don't move your non-dominant hand. Just use it, press down, take a pin. You wanna sit it there, get a nice bit of hair with it, and put the bobby pin through the donut and your hair facing forward down the tube. I suggest, especially when it's new, putting two in each side. I'm sure this is not an attractive look. Sorry if you can't see very well. Try. Making sure that hair is all in the center first. There, one more. There, so the idea is to get this base shape first. Sometimes you gotta take it off and do it again, but eventually you'll get so good at this that it just flips up there quickly. So now that it's nice and sturdy, if you want to widen it a bit, you can. We want to spread the hair a little bit at a time. If you do it too quickly, it gets really loose and you'll get frustrated with it. So if it's getting too loose, just pull on that little center strand that retightens it for you. There, see, this one's curving out nicely. This one's being a pain in my butt, but there's always one. It's all about just quickly molding, quickly molding, but gently. All right, so there you go. You might have a little bit of the edges sticking out, but that is where your hair comes in. We're gonna just run our hand along the bottom of the donut, just so there's enough there that it picks up a little bit of your hair up until that point there, so it looks like it's all coming from your head, right? So we flip it up and over, putting your finger down. So if you pull it too tight, it's 
going to be really obvious that it's not part of it. So just you can pull anything out that's not working and then I, I put a pin in that direction. Other side. Up and over. Oh, this side's cooperating finally. And then pin it down towards the center. See, like that. Now you can fiddle with the hair if you need to. Pull the center part. See, now that it's in, it's quite sturdy. So the tighter it is, the flatter it will look. But the concept is, it's the hardest the first time to do it because the hair is so fresh and the hair is not molded in that way. When you do it from straight like this, which I prefer to do, um, it does piss you off for the first few times. But see, it's in the shape. You want your hairspray, spray it. You want to flatten any hair that is not going out with. However, word of warning, go easy on the hairspray on the side parts here because any hair that is flipped over this way, if you pull it off, if you've pushed it down like this and then you go and pull it off, you can snap little bits of your hair off. That's the only time that you can really damage your hair with this stuff. So that is how it is. It's not an easy, easy style, but once, once the hair piece itself gets used to this shape. That's why I only wash mine like once a week so I don't have to go through this all the time. And because I have short hair then I will just uh, hide it at the back and plunk on my beret. Mwah. And it doesn't have to be perfect. The less perfect it is, the more real it looks. The more sleek and, and exact it looks, the more people go, is that your hair is that a hairpiece? Just experiment with it. If, try it, you know, don't try it 10 minutes before you're going out. Get used to doing it. But that, my friends, is how I do it. I do it with long hair, short hair, curled hair. I've been doing it for years, so um, look on my channel for any inspiration. If you have any questions left, you can leave them in the description down below. I'll put all the names of the tools you need in the description down below as well. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, please like it, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. If you try this, make sure you tag me on Instagram, Facebook, wherever. Cassidy LaCreme here. Who loves you? I do!